What's up guys, welcome back to another video here on Muddy Beards 4x4. Today, I'm gonna be setting up the suspension on the rear end of this Jeep, so stay tuned. In order to take some of the guessing out of uh, building this kit, I went with the Barnes four-wheel drive DIY upper triangulated four-link kit. This is the inch and a quarter inch JMX Heim. This is their upgraded one. Uh, I definitely would recommend it. This is what they recommended. I called and talked to them. And uh, the other Heim joints, they do squeak a little bit. It's just the nature of Heim joints. Uh, that's what they do. But these ones are supposedly a lot better with that. Uh, they're Teflon coated on the inside and Kevlar. So there is limitations of you know the vehicle. I'm not building a totally custom vehicle. The frame is set. I'm not redoing the frame. The axle is pretty much set. Uh, so there's very little things that I can do to change my numbers. There is some things uh, that I'll go over here in a second, uh, but there's not a whole lot of things that I can do to change my numbers. If you wanna get super deep into it, just Google four link calculator. There's an Excel spreadsheet, someone made it. You punch in all your numbers and it gives you a nice graph of everything, uh, how everything's gonna turn out. In building your own four link suspension, there's a lot to think about. And I'm gonna show you down here on the bench, I have it exactly set up, exactly the numbers, uh, measurements, how it's gonna be set up under the Jeep. And I'll show you why I'm setting it up that way. So we got our upper link right here on top of the axle, lower link on the axle right here, our upper link on the frame side with our three holes for our anti-squat adjustment, and the lower link on the frame, just for your reference so you know where everything is. First thing we're gonna talk about is axle link separation. So that is the distance between this upper link and the lower link. So you want it 25% of your tire size. So I have a 40 inch tire, so I need 10 inches of axle link separation. Obviously there's packaging uh, problems in different suspension and limitations of your axle and how much clearance you have. So the next thing I'm gonna talk about is your lower link. So your lower link you want at no more than 10 degrees of angle. So if you put your angle finder on top of the tube, uh, you want 10 degrees. If you end up going too, too high on that number, all of the the stress, anytime you hit a bump or anything, it's going to transfer that energy into the frame and it's going to be a much rougher ride, harder on your components. So 10 degrees is typically maximum on that. In your upper link, you want it totally flat, totally level. I'm going to be running equal length tubes on my uppers and lowers because as the suspension droops and articulates up and down, it keeps your pinion pointed directly at your transfer case. And me, with a shorter wheelbase, I need all the help I can get with my driveline angles to help out with my U-joints. So if you run a shorter link on the top, maybe 75% of your lower, maybe a little bit 75, 80%, you're gonna get uh, a little more movement on your uh, pinion as you go up and down of your articulation. So it's not gonna stay pointed at your transfer case, it's gonna slightly push down a little bit. So basically you follow these rules, axle link separation, lower link 10 degrees, upper link level. We'll get into the horizontal separation as I'm doing it, but basically you want at least 40 degrees of angle on those upper links in order to center that axle. More is better, 40 is the minimum. And obviously on the lower links on the axle side, you want them as far out on the tube as possible without them rubbing on your tires. With the axle up under the Jeep now, we can get the thing centered. I have the pinion angle already set at 20 degrees, and we measure from a couple spots from the frame to the axle to make sure that it's the exact same distance on both sides centered. Plumb bob off the side of the frame. Uh, you probably do a laser leveler or something like that to try and get it square with the front and everything. Uh, but I just used a couple of cheap, cheap plumb bobs marked the axle, measured uh, a, a million times back and forth, back and forth. So take your time. This is where you need to take the time to do it because if you mess this up, it's gonna be hard to fix. Also make sure you have enough room for your pumpkin 
on its up travel. The next thing we gotta do is figure out how far out on the axle I can mount this lower mount. In order to do that, I have to figure out my tire distance off of the flange. So I went ahead and took a couple measurements, uh, just laid some tube over the top of my tire, measured the center part of the rim, and figured out how much room I have. And then I can come over here and mark the frame, which I already have right here. And I have confidence that my tire is not gonna rub on it. So obviously the farther out you go, the better. It's gonna give you a little bit more triangulation on this lower link. So I want it out as far as possible without having any clearance issues. In order to get my axle link separation to measure it, it's kind of difficult, but I kind of figured out that my framing square, I can use some magnets and magnet it to the top of it, and it brings it out all the way out here to uh, the axle tube where my bracket's gonna go. And luckily it has a ruler on the side. Perfect, now this makes things a lot easier. Uh, noting that this top piece is, is two inches and uh, the bolt hole on the top of the bracket is inch and a half, so you gotta take off half an inch. So we're starting here and we'll go down nine inches because that's what I ended up at. My compromise of my axle link separation is gonna be nine inches, preferably 10, gonna be nine, it's just the way it is. Also taking into consideration the, uh, the measurement for the back of the tire for your your tire and uh, rim clearance. With that measurement in mind, you go down here and go down to nine and a half, and I can tack it into place right here. Now, before you go ahead and weld these onto your frame, you want to make sure that your frame is in good enough shape that you can even weld on it. Uh, there's a lot of TJs out there, especially since they're older now, that uh, the frames are pretty much just rotted through. They're not strong at all. I would not recommend welding these brackets to that frame that's all rusted and pitted and uh, expect it to hold up because it will rip out of that frame and you will lose your axle, brake all, everything. So that's not a good idea. So make sure you inspect your frame, make sure it's strong, not all rusted out, and that you're able to even weld on it. My frame, this Jeep has been in Washington inside pretty much its whole life. And the frame has a little bit of surface rust on it, but it is in fantastic shape. It's super strong. So I'm just gonna weld to it. But in order to do that, I also wanna plug weld a couple spots. So I'll be drilling two holes. Also, I wanna move this control arm mount back as far as possible. Seven eighths of an inch is what I'm gonna take off of this. So I'm gonna cut this off, uh, clean the frame up, drill these holes, and then we'll tack weld this uh, bracket to the frame. With the axle squared up under the Jeep, my lower mounts on the axle tacked on, lower mounts on the frame tacked on. I can now measure uh, my tube to see how long of a tube I'm gonna want. And it looks like it's gonna be a 24 and a half. So I'm gonna cut my two bottom tubes and I'll put it on and then we can start setting up uh, the upper links. Now that I have my tube cut to the length that I want, I'm actually going to plug weld these as well. So I need to drill four holes, so one, two, two on each side. You're just gonna really ensure that it's super strong and if these welds fail, it's not gonna pull out and uh, your whole rear axle is gonna fall out. So I'm just gonna mark these holes, 
get them up in the drill press and drill them out. Now, if you guys haven't realized by now that these are left and right hand threads, you want to make 100% sure before you put these on. I almost made the mistake of putting uh, two left hands on one tube. I would have taken it back apart. So make sure you double check your left and right hand threads uh, bungs before you start welding these in. Wah, wah. This lower control arm bracket's in the way. Man, I didn't want to have to do that right now, but I guess I'm gonna have to do it right now. Quick tip when you're welding up these brackets, because this is a two-piece bracket, uh, you don't want it to be too tight because once you weld, things are going to shrink and expand, causing it to probably not want to slide into this bracket. So what you want to do is tighten down this bracket, uh, bolt it down tight, tack together the ends, the, lead, the edges, and then loosen up the nut just a turn or so so it can expand. And then weld the outside of the bracket first so it'll kind of pull the metal out just a tiny bit allowing you to install your heim joints uh, and your misalignment spacers in there because otherwise if you start welding on it it's going to shrink on you and you're going to end up having to grind on your misalignment spacers in order to get it to fit inside there. This particular bracket goes on the inside of the frame flush up against it and the welding point would be on top of the bracket here on top of the frame which the body is in the way. So I'm kind of worried about uh, being able to weld on top of the frame uh, with the body in a way. I am gonna lift it up, uh, loosen the body mounts to give myself a lot more room. So I'm gonna add these two little tabs, little brackets here to weld to the top of the frame because I'll be a lot easier to weld. Now with the passenger side fully tacked in, everything's exactly where I want it. I wanna copy the exact same thing on this side. You want to put your bracket up on the frame, everything on the frame is the same on this side as it is on that side. It doesn't necessarily matter what, how long the links are or anything like that. Once one side's done, the other side has to be exactly the same. So uh, I know that these are exactly the same on both sides. So now double check all my measurements, one inch from the edge. And I know this is exactly the same as it is on that side and I can tack it into place. With our control arm bolted in now, we can start taking our measurements, making sure that the length is correct and the mounting locations are correct so it matches exactly the other side. Thirty and six eighths. Now on these upper links, you need at least forty degrees of angle going into the axle to make sure that it's going to stay centered and be strong. So these brackets are twenty degrees. So I'm going to take that into account that if this link comes off here, bar totally straight, it's twenty degrees. And I can just put it up against here, and I can see that my link is more than twenty degrees because. It is angled in more than this bar here. So I know that this is more than 20 degrees and I'm happy with that. I'm going to take a measurement from the center of the heim joint on top of the axle out to the brake bracket, which I know is exactly the same on both sides. I've measured it many times. So I'm going to take that measurement and I'm going to use that measurement to locate this top uh, bracket on the driver's side so I know it's exactly centered on top of the axle housing. Get out of here. 
Now with everything all tacked into place, what you want to do is you want to run it through its whole suspension cycle all the way up and all the way down, making sure that there's no binding or anything is going to be causing you any problems. Also watching the driveline angle as it goes up and down points directly at the transfer case all the way through its cycle all the way up and down, which is exactly what I want, especially with these shorter wheelbase TJs. You really need that extra driveline angle. Everything looks really good and I am happy with the way this turned out. Well that's going to do it for this video. I hope it helps you guys learn just a little bit about how to set up your own four link suspension. Help you make a decision on if you want to do it yourself and what parts to use. I will leave a link in the description to all the parts that I used on this build uh, from Barnes Four Wheel Drive. I know there's still a ton of work to do. Uh, it's not even welded in yet. Everything's still tacked welded in uh, but I need to measure for my coilovers which I'm going to do in a separate video uh, which is why I'm kind of cutting this one a little bit short the video is not short but uh, it's going to feel like it's not done yet which is not if you want to follow us on social media we're muddybeards 4x4 Facebook Instagram uh, also link in the description for our website got shirts merchandise and some other cool stuff and we'll see you next time